My name is Derek Mitchell, president of the National Democratic Institute. Democracies around the world face a growing challenge from new digital technologies. Ahead of Taiwan's 2020 general election, NDI traveled to Taipei to learn how Taiwan's government, civic tech community, and citizens work together to prevent unwanted foreign influence on their election. This is their story. She said China was using disinformation to divide Taiwan and threaten its democracy. This month, Taiwan officials found Beijing's messages broadcast on more than a dozen local outlets. As the 2020 presidential election draws near, disinformation attacks are expected to become more frequent. I'm coming to Taiwan to observe the uh, election because this could affect the future of Taiwan. What I can observe is that many people in Taiwan be affected by the fake news or, or you, the so-called uh, spam news a lot. So many information that they can they can be hard to filter it out. This is not an election Yeah, I heard the description of canary in the coal mine uh, many, many times before. And I would say that Taiwan and the Taiwanese really do stand at the forefront of combating disinformation and also authoritarian um, influence. I think that other countries should be aware how Chinese is trying to gain influence to the world, not only in Taiwan. Well, Chinese trying to threaten Taiwan for so long. We've been threatened by China for more than 50 years. I think with this research of Chinese founded um, produced disinformation, and we're trying to um, do more networking with the world, and we found out most of the countries, like especially in Europe, are not aware of how authoritarian by China is spreading in their country. I think the disinformation campaign or information warfare, their, their goal has uh, several folds. Of course, um, in democracies, this information warfare works best when society is divided and polarized. So to further introduce that, perhaps another type of government, for example, a more authoritarian-oriented regime will be better for the people of democracy comparatively to uh, democratic regimes. To be honest, there are so many disinformation in Taiwan right now. They are in all different kinds of topics. Well, but during the election uh, period, they are more about politics, more about parties, more about discredit the government than ever. The controversies about President Tsai's dissertation is the most prominent one. The, uh, about the PhD, if, if she does have one. So, um, I don't know how to comment on that, but um, I believe it is an issue. Yeah, I have to say that there's a lot of fake news. Like, um, in, uh, a few days ago, there is uh, uh, there's even a fake news that say uh, if you hold the uh, the old identity uh, ID card, you cannot vote. Fake news are there all the time. So I think people need to use their you know their wisdom, their knowledge to judge. Half of Taiwanese people they casted their vote under the memories or understanding of the fake version of news. It's not only like pro-democracy or pro-independence uh, versus pro-China anymore. I think it's more like creating hatred in the society and also creating distrust to our government. I would say that Taiwan can serve as an example or um, someone who could uh, teach the lesson of resilience to other democracies and how to combat um, these kind of influence. And I would also say that in this regard, Taiwanese civil societies and non-government organizations really played a significant part in combating these uh, influence operations. Democracy and the internet have evolved in tandem in Taiwan. In 
2014, during a peaceful protest known as the Sunflower Movement, civil society used technology to press for more open and transparent governance. Since then, digital activists have worked with the Taiwan government to help better inform their decision-making, connect with citizens, and tackle serious social challenges like disinformation. Civic tech is technology that facilitates civic participation, and the technology itself is co-created by everybody in the social sector. And the social sector leadership still uh, assembles and organizes interested people to solve social problems without waiting for the government to come up with a plan or a policy. So for the administration, it's always about we cannot beat them, so we must join them, them being the activists. This kind of interconnected relation between our governance model and civil-minded hackers uh, really engages people. I don't see any other community. God Zero is uh, certainly one of the more prominent civic tech group in Taiwan. So God Zero is not an organization. God Zero is a community of many people and project. It does not have a leader. It does not have a representative. So I think that is very different from other civil organizations. Most of the contributors are volunteer, but to me, hacking is uh, partly about ignoring the rules, but mostly about building solutions, creative ones. Once you understand the whole context, the various different stakes of the multi-stakeholder approach, then people become inoculated against oversimplification, and oversimplification is indeed what this information is relying on. There has been uh, a long history of uh, election and voting information websites in Gov Zero. Currently, we can what we could do is to like use Chaba, use media literacy lesson to helping people. Why China has the intention to 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 influence Taiwan election? My research found that Lai has become one of the most significant social platforms to spread out disinformation or fake news. And LINE is a close communication group. So we do provide a chatbot. We do have an ecosystem. My grandma will text the chatbot to some disinformation. While she receives this kind of disinformation from her friends, she can just forwarding with a click to the chatbot. Then the chatbot will search for a database. If the database has this disinformation reply, the Chaba will reply my grandma automatically said, oh, it's fake. Media literacy is very important. Teaching young people and even senior uh, citizens within democracies how to think more critically when they receive a piece of information. The open government idea hinges on us making a clear and timely response whenever there is a misunderstanding or misinformation. And so we always make sure whenever there is a trending piece of misinformation, we roll out funny, mimetic, engineered uh, pieces of clarification that are organically funny, meaning that when people look at it, uh, they don't reinforce their stereotypes, they rather find it fun, so they're willing to share. In terms of disinformation, I, I feel like a lot of research are done in closed, behind closed doors, but uh, I think Zero Archive is a, is a, is a way that some of us found that maybe there is an open public way of addressing these kind of issues. Right now, it is a community effort to archive a lot of the content that is available in Taiwan's information space. And also because it's a Gov Zero project, the code and the data sets of Zero Archives are both open sourced. It's publicly available and accessible for everyone to use. If you want to say that there's a problem, you have to have data to prove it. More and more I become aware that uh, it's, you're not going to solve all those problems by uh, a single programmers or a few programs. You have to have a lot of different people coming together to figure out a solution. We are saying that open data, open source is much more like religion. I believe this kind of thing works. I believe it can help other people. So I devoted myself, I contribute myself to this civic tech community. And I believe someone who has the same spirit will just make this happen again and again. I think a lot of places uh, and democratic countries are 
gradually adopting civic tech as a solution to uh, social and political problems. Combating influence operation on democracy is exceedingly important, and I think that democracies around the world need to come together, share information, and figure out a strategy of preventing authoritarian regime from infringing upon um, the liberty and freedom that a lot of um, the forebearers uh, fight so hard for. You can only solve these problems by building trust. And openness and transparency is the most important tools to build trust within the society. The main harm of disinformation is to discourage people from participating in democratic discourse. Uh, it is to make sure uh, that people who uh, believe different things keep believing those different things and uh, lack the agency to talk to one another. Democracy is not something they are nature. It's not a nature belief. We have to fight for democracy. And it could easily be taken away if we don't vote carefully. And I think most of the Taiwanese young, especially young generation, have a strong uh, understanding to this. And this election and next election will be important as well. Democratic nations around the world are facing the growing threat of foreign authoritarian influence. The 2020 election in Taiwan should serve as a model for how civil society, technologists, and a responsive government can partner to secure democratic freedom. NDI will continue to support democracies as they confront the corrosive power of weaponized disinformation. Because while Taiwan may be a canary in a digital coal mine, eternal vigilance against this growing challenge is required of all democracies everywhere.